Good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have a very familiar face here with us. No, it is not Jeff Gargas. No, not even Joshua double underscore stamper. No, Katie Miglin is still on maternity leave. We have the one and only Mr. Brad Hughes with us on the show. If you are not familiar with Brad, oh my goodness, are you in for a treat? Brad and I get to run the Sunday weekly warm up together, and I am so overjoyed that he is officially on the Teach Better Today morning show. We'll get ready to have just a ball. We'll be right back. <laughs> Brad Hughes in the house. Brad, how are you doing? Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Teach Better family, and Happy New Year. I'm doing great. So excited to connect with you for our Teach Better Today morning show. What a great way to kick off the day with you, Ray. Wait, is it legit that this is your first time on the Teach Better Today morning show? It is legit. This is my Teach Better Today debut. Uh, I, I spent some extra time uh, in uh, the hair and makeup room, uh, and I want to thank you for having the green heart-shaped M&Ms ready for me, Ray per my exacting demands in the uh, in the ready room. So I'm ready for a great show to kick off our Teach Better Day and to kick off our morning with everybody in our Teach Better community. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, Brad, I can't believe this is your first time on the show because you and I have been live together like every week for mm-hmm. years. I, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but nope. for years. Years. Yeah, years. We used to be live together on Friday mornings for the daily drop-in, and that was That's back right. in... 2021 into 2022 and um gosh so many memories and now we're live every single sunday together more or less um we're obviously just coming back from a winter winter break from that show but our sunday weekly warm-up is exclusive in our private group and then it airs monday night so if you're watching on facebook youtube twitter twitch or linkedin You can probably still catch it. Obviously, it's also an episode of Teach Better Talk. So Brad Hughes hopefully isn't too much of a a stranger in this community. (laughs) I hope not, too. And that's part of the uh, the gift of the Teach Better community is to be able to interact and connect in in a lot of different ways and in ways that sort of make sense for our viewers and uh, and members, whether it's live or later. I like to say uh, we're here for you and we're here along with you. So uh, if you're joining us uh, in Facebook, uh, this morning, please let us know who you are and where you're joining us from and uh, let us know what's uh, what's coming up for you, what important uh, things you have to accomplish today. Yeah, all the things as we get into the, the morning. Things. Brad, I know that you are like such a staple. You're a part of the Teach Better team. You're an amazing educator. But let's just assume that it's the new year and we've connected with, you know, some new Teach Better family members who have recently joined the Teach Better family. Maybe they okay. read a blog for the first time over at teachbetter.com or hopped into our admin mastermind on Tuesdays, or maybe, ooh, ooh, maybe they were listening to a podcast in the Teach Better Podcast Network and just so happen to stumble across the show and they don't know who you are. Will you give us a little bit of insight? What do you do? What's your thing? What's your spiel? 100%. Yeah, I'm uh, Brad Hughes. Uh, I'm a school leader and uh, chief encouragement officer here in Ontario, Canada. I'm a Sagittarius. I like uh, long walks on the beach. I do like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. Uh, and uh, I love uh, my work with the Teach Better team, uh, training and development specialist with the team. Uh, I'm a school leader. I'm my 30th year of, as an educator, Ray, and uh, serving an elementary school in small town Ontario right now, which has just been a delight. Uh, I've got a family of four. Uh, both kids are in their 20s. I've got a little uh, Bichon poodle named Charlie, who is uh, 12 years old, and I, 90% attitude and, and 10% lap dog. And uh, my passion is connecting with people. Uh, my passion is uh, nurturing relationships uh, that are full of fun and hope and good humor. Uh, I love wordplay, so you'll always catch me uh, riffing on a number of puns. And uh, I love my work with the Teacher Better community. And Ray, as you said, uh, you know this this weekly opportunity that we uh, created through the daily drop-in and then through the uh, Sunday weekly warm-up, I love live. I, I love working with you live personally, and I love connecting live with the Teacher Better community. So uh, I'm excited to be here. That's a little bit about me. 
Yeah, friends, if you're enjoying the Teach Better Today morning show, this year we've made a little bit of an effort to bring on more guests, right? People in our community to share their story. Trust me, we have only just gotten started with this. But something I really want to give a shout out to is if you enjoy the opportunity to meet new educators, whether they be new to the community or just new to our PLN, um, the Sunday show in my mind is the deep dive into those guests. Obviously, here on the Teach Better Morning Show, we love to you know, like talk shop and hang out and kind of have it be a casual conversation. Brad, what I like on the Sunday show is it's closer to a 45 minute hour show and it's live. So we not only get to dive into the guest a little bit more deeply, but we also take questions live from the community and there, and it's a little bit more of an interactive experience. So I personally really enjoy that. (laughs) I really enjoy it too. I, I love seeing uh, new guests pop into the comments, letting us know where they're joining us from. I also love seeing our regulars who come and uh, you know show up with us and show up for us every Sunday night uh, from all over the place. And it's really gratifying. It's also gratifying to do, like you said, a deep dive into you know what makes you know these uh, caring, committed educators tick, uh, what their why for their work is, and and getting to know. I, I find there's a little bit of a, there's new information. There's a new New information, new uh, new connections made each and every week. Even with guests with whom you know, you know, I are really familiar. There's always a little bit of learning that goes on. I, really, I didn't know you do that. Or I didn't know how you contributed that way. It really is, you know, a great combination of entertainment, uh, education, support, uh, wisdom, and hopefully leaving with with a few smiles as well. I love it. And you know, you guys have gotten a taste of this already as we've just sprinkled in some guests thus far, but. I feel like sometimes on this show, the Teach Better Today morning show, they give like a mic drop comment and you're like, whoa, I got to connect with this person. Yeah. But then you don't necessarily get to dive deeper into the how and 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 what actually it takes to create whatever awesome experience they're, they're experts in. And on the Sunday show, we like to ask the hard questions and, and do some of that stuff. So I really enjoy it. And Brad, I... I know I tell you this all the time, but I legitimately love spending time with you. I think you are one of the best humans on the planet. And it feels like now that you've been on the Today Show, you're going to have to be a staple. I don't know how we're going to make this work, but I just love being live with you. (laughs) I love being live with you too, Ray. I mean, the, uh, the opportunity to interact with you as, you know, as an interviewer, as a colleague and a friend is just, uh, it just, you know, lifts my heart. Uh, I love sharing positive energy with you. I love sharing, you know, hope and uh, and excitement and confidence in what we do as educators. I also love sharing the learning journey with you. I know that each of us is in a process of of learning to do a little bit better and better, which is what the you know teach better mindset is all about. But uh, you really help me to feel relaxed and natural and to and to bring you know some of my gifts and talents forward uh, in a way that I hope that uh, feels gratifying for you too. Mm, so so good. No, we're going to get into in our show more about Brad Hughes as an educator, which I feel like I don't get to like turn the mic on you and interview very often. Usually we're tag teaming those hosts responsibilities. So that's coming. But before we get into that, how was your new year's? How was your holiday? Your birthday was in December. I mean, I can only imagine that it has been a very chaotic month. Now we're in January, but we're only like a week or so in. How are you feeling? How are things? I'm feeling great. Uh, I'm I'm feeling really at ease, <laughs> and I, I've actually selected ease as my one word for 2024. And uh, just you know, continuing to try to approach things with uh, with a peace of mind that says, you know, wherever and however I show up, um, this is me. Uh, and uh, I really do believe that uh, all of us have uh, gifts and uh, support we can offer in every interaction. And and I've selected ease as a way of you know just easing into the year and just allowing, you know, great things and positive opportunities to to emerge. I, I think I was really uh, inspired by some kind of a quotation or one of those little Facebook uh, slides that you see that, you know, reminded me that, you know, it's, it's really easy uh, and it sometimes feels really urgent to approach life with that sense of, of urgency and stress uh, and anxiety. And believe me, I, I'm, I'm hardwired for that. I've, I've come by that naturally. So, you know, it, it, it may be more difficult to trust the sense of ease that we may feel and the ease that you and I feel when we're interacting here like this, Ray, is, uh, is really something to be celebrated. And it's something that's cultivated as well. So it's been uh, a nice, uh, easy or like a sense of ease in, in my holiday. Uh, New Year's New Year's Day for us means uh, a home cooked meal. We've been uh, we cooked a uh, turkey dinner just for our immediate family. 
Uh, and we had uh, some family game night, which has been fantastic. And uh, just lots of movies and lots of, you know, time just, again, just to to take it easy. And uh, I'm hoping that the holiday uh, was, uh, was a sense of ease and restoration for you and family too, right? No, it's been wonderful. I, I, you know, now that you say that, I, I don't know that we've asked our community for those of you that are participating in the one word, you know, New Year's, you know, tradition. I feel like so many yeah. of us have, have taken that on over the years. I would love to see that in the comments to see what people have chosen. I feel like the words get more and more creative as they go. People get more and more reflective as they participate in this process. And Brad, I really like the concept of ease, because even in a difficult or challenging circumstance, ease can find its way into kind of the peace that exists within those those processes as well. I mean, obviously, ease connected to easy makes sense. But even when things are not so easy, they can be done with a sense of ease. I, I really love that that is something that that you've made a connection for not only here on the show, but for yourself as the word of the year. I appreciate that. And I'm always inspired by how people come to approach, whether it's a one word or whether it's a re resolution, it, but you really are right. It, it is a process. And I, I think that it's a process of continued growth. And I, I think there's a risk. There's a bit of a dark side in sort of choosing a word or a resolution, because inevitably as humans, we're going to have setbacks. We're going to fall short of what we aspire to do. But that's something that unites all of us is we're, we're all human and we're all striving for you know, better lives, more connection, whatever we're striving for, we're going to meet with setbacks and struggles and challenges. It doesn't mean that we failed. It doesn't mean that we need to derail. But, you know, those little gentle course corrections, sometimes a one word or a resolution or, or something that, you know, whether it's uh, faith or family or spirit, something that can help nudge you back to the course where you feel most at ease, where you feel most your true self, uh, I think is uh, is really worthy. And I'm excited to, to, to hear how how you and how our Teach Better family is uh, continuing with that transition and that motivation, those course corrections for uh, 2024. Yeah, I love the word because it allows us to, I feel as though a word of the year almost centers you for your continuous goals that you have, right? Obviously, many of us, uh, speaking of that, you and yeah. I just set a bingo board as, as our goals for 2024. <laughs> and uh, did you finish yours yet? Are you officially done with your bingo board yet? No, I'm not officially done. Uh, okay. I, I had a, I had a, I had a great meetup with, uh, with teach better family member, Joshua Stamper, and we committed in 2024 to continue to be intentional about connecting at least once a month. And so Josh and I are going to put uh, connect more with Josh, connect more with Brad right on our bingo board. So we can hit that out of the park for the get-go but i'm really excited about that what but what a fun opportunity as a community and maybe it's something that you know our listeners and viewers can take by extension you know bringing sort of gamifying that yes. uh that 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 goal setting i think when i when i saw that opportunity i was like yes this is awesome yeah for those of you who may not have seen it um we can send you our template like literally don't don't put a lot of effort into creating it but essentially we created a template that was editable for our internal team Happy to make one to send it out to all of you if you're interested. And it's a bingo board. Obviously, it has a free space in the middle because we all deserve a freebie. Right and on. you just put in like little things that you want to see happen. It could be professional, personal. I even liked the concept of putting other people's goals that you really just want to support them in um, and filling the bingo board up and saying, hey, let's keep each other updated on how these goals are going and uh, you could even add your word to the top of that kind of as the theme of the year. I think my word this year is going to be eventually, which I know sounds strange, but I feel as though this is the year that I've worked pretty consistently. I know that things are coming. I'm going to make things happen this year. And I want to find some, I don't know, eventually. I'm, I'm going I'm to get to some of these things this year and hit that eventually mark. This will be good. I, I don't know. I'm liking that, that word these that's days. That's really resonant for me. And and what I know and continue to learn about you both personally and professionally is uh is you you are you are highly driven to be impactful and you're also highly reflective on the impact that you make. The, the, the power of eventually is you know situating yourself in a way where you're allowing those great things to come to you as well as you're balancing, you know, your 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 focus, your direction, your drive, but you know, eventually means yeah, I, I'm important in my space. I'm important in the world. I, I have things to offer. I have goals and dreams and aspirations, but, you know, 
positioning myself for them to come to me and celebrating them is uh, I love that word eventually. And and it's it eventually means it will happen no matter what, right? It will we'll eventually get there, whether we get there this week or in two weeks, gives us some grace, but we it will be it will be what we eventually get to. So yeah, that I think these are two good words for us this year. I'm I'm liking this vibe. I'm excited to see everybody Me else's too. and you know find some way to to celebrate those those words, whether you put the word on a bingo card or Brad, I won't lie, I did just tattoo eventually on my arm so that I think I made it as permanent as possible. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I just love the dichotomy between permanence and eventually. Like there's that, <laughs> there's that creative tension between this is this is a a permanent and ongoing commitment, and just really positioning yourself for success. And you know, I, I think that ease and eventually they they really work together. And that 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 ease of mind, that that peace of mind, that good things will continue to come uh, in spite of difficulty. I just love your word, Ray. Well, and Brad, can we add a little bit of humor? Maybe just an yep. internal joke between you and I, because we're both like artistic people. Yep. Um, I am very kind of like straight edged in terms of like I like things clean. Uh, yep. I, you know, if if I was to ever tattoo something on myself, obviously it would be a very clean line word that I intentionally put eventually crooked out of order with the letters. Discom yep. to kind of discombobulate it a bit. I could show you, I'll send you a picture, but yeah, it's, it's almost like the, the journey of eventually not being a straight line, but it was, it was tough for me to get to that conclusion that that was the right artistic decision. And, and think about the growth that that represents. Like think about how you know yourself in terms of your nature of being, you know, uh, you're looking for clarity, you're looking for straight edges, and yet you're giving yourself permission. You're changing, you're growing, you're evolving to allow room in your heart and in your life for things to happen eventually. And I can really see the wink and the smile. Like if we're thinking about sort of teach better goals and we're thinking about, you know, all of our internal goals and projects and we've got this drive to get it done now and soon and faster and better. It's like, yeah, eventually, eventually, eventually it'll happen. Oh my gosh. The weird conversations we get into. This is why I love being live with Brad Hughes. We'll be right back for our team talk. <laughs> sticking with us on the teach better today morning show we are here for our team talk and yes we're gonna go over time because brad hughes is here and of course we got talking brad in this section before we wrap up the show because we are so late but who cares we want to talk about you who you are as an educator you're not just this amazing personality you also are also adding a ton of insight into the education space and doing so much to better our field. And I'd like to start there. So obviously you're an educational leader. You are constantly supporting educators, whether it be in person day to day, or even in your virtual community. Tell me a little bit about what seems to be coming to mind as something you're turning to frequently, maybe advice educators seem to be seeking most often or something you feel like is having an impact with the educators that you find yourself working with these days? Ray, I, I think right now, uh, especially as we turn the calendar page on a new year, uh, educators are hopefully returning to school, uh, uh, feeling refreshed and restored and, and something that uh, comes up frequently, uh, especially as you know each of us encounters uh, setbacks in our personal professional lives, you know, hardships or heartaches. It's just a matter of connecting positively within the community and recognizing that it's, it's safe to be vulnerable and it's safe to, uh, to let others know if and when you're struggling. Uh, you know, as we work our way through the school year, something that's important to me personally and professionally is to build the relationships and to build the trust, whether it's in person, Ray, or within our you know, virtual communities, to build the trust where we're all works in progress and we understand that, you know, we want the very best for ourselves and for our students. And sometimes that really means putting ourselves, our individual selves and our family selves first. Uh, education is such a, 
a community of givers and servers and doers. Uh, and uh, what I've recognized, you know, very, very markedly and and very poignantly is the you know the importance of uh, protecting our own uh, well-being as well as putting the family needs uh, first, so that we can better serve kids in our educational spaces. I, I, I truly believe that the well-being of the significant adults in kids' lives is 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 forever tied to the well-being of kids. And that comes from my work and learning with Dr. Stuart Schenker. Uh, the the selfreg.ca is is uh, where that learning. So that continues to be really impactful in everything I do and just recognizing the stresses around us, seeking to reduce the stresses so that you know our, our natural capacities can emerge. And that goes for the kids that I serve as well as for the adults that I connect with each day. Brad, obviously, as our morning kind of is in full swing, we're welcoming students back for many of us as our day continues. Is there any challenge that you can maybe encourage our community to either keep in mind or do an actionable step to to be better in this area as we kind of progress into our January plans? What I'd like to share with you is a challenge that I've set for myself, and that is to, uh, as we get back into uh, restoring our schools and communities uh, after a winter break, is I really want to leverage and, and amplify student voice. I, as a new principal to the building this year, this is a great opportunity for me to check in with our students, whether they're three or approaching 13, and say, how is school going for you? And are there ways that you know school is working really well for you? And, and do you have ideas how school could be even better? I mean, how could school be even more of something that you look forward to, help you to feel even more engaged and, and leave feeling glad you came? What, one thing that kind of naturally emerged, Ray, that I'm excited about is that um, we, we've been able to take student ideas for, uh, for clubs. Uh, and, you know, student initiated clubs. And then we match those student interests, uh, whether it's coding or visual arts or music or even karaoke. We've been able to met we've been able to match those student interests with uh, with willing and supportive staff who can come alongside and guide the student leadership. So that'll be part of my approach as we get back into uh, into January 2024, Ray, is, you know, visiting classrooms and saying, hey, how is school working for you and how can I as a school leader and how can our staff and faculty work? to make it a place where you feel even more inspired and connected. I'd love to see how many of you are doing that audit of not only student voice, but teacher voice, the voices mm -hmm. of our leadership teams. How are you asking those questions and what responses are you getting? It may just be, hey, I feel like we're doing really well. I want this specific idea or this specific concept to continue. Or maybe there's some new ideas that you're able to implement that isn't necessarily a big lift, but makes a big impact. It will be really nice to see how some of us are, are able to kind of do that audit and adjustment in our reflection heading into the year. Brad, obviously you're a very easy person to get a hold of because you're a member of the Teach Better team. You're extremely active in our Teach Better family. But um, if somebody listening here, maybe connecting you with the connecting with you for the first time, wants to continue this conversation, maybe steal some resources, uh, how can they get connected? I'm really excited to connect with anyone who's looking to uh, better themselves and, and to better life uh, for kids in our educational spaces. Uh, you can see my Twitter or X handle there. It's at Brad underscore Hughes. I'm also on Instagram. It's underscore Brad underscore Hughes. Uh, and of course, you can reach me on Facebook within our Teach Better private Facebook group or within our Teach Better uh, public group and public page. I, I, I visit that frequently as well. Uh, if you're a school leader and looking to connect with, with others uh, like me, uh, we've got a uh, Teach Better Admin Mastermind private Facebook group and Admin Mastermind. Quick shout out to Joshua Stamper and to Ray Heward and to Jeff Gargas. Our, 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 our Admin Mastermind community continues to grow and make positive difference for ourselves as school leaders so we can pour that goodness back into others. And so please join us there. That uh, that takes place uh, every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. You can connect with, uh, with me and others there as well. Ugh, so many good things. And of course, if you have any issues connecting with Brad, DM me, I'll give you a cell phone number. Like it's, he's a very easy contact, open guy. <laughs> this is a great conversation. Brad, thanks for coming on the show. I can't believe it took us all the way to January to get you uh, featured on here, but I love our Sunday show. I hope you'll come back for the Today Show at some point this semester because it's always fun to chat with you. I would love to come back. And I think Ray, it just serves to, you know, serves to confirm that, that good things happen eventually. Uh, we just eventually. give each other the time and the space and support to make it happen. And, uh, you know, this is the spark that makes me think, yeah, I want to come back again and again to uh, to be part of the Teach Better Today community as well. So thanks for the invitation. Well, well, is it okay to even say that this this episode 
really happened with such ease? It, this 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 ha episode happened. This conversation filled me with a sense of of ease, <laughs> and I'm, I'm really glad that we had the opportunity to 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 to, to go easy on each other with our first uh, <laughs> debut Teach Better Today episode. Oh my gosh, guys! Have a great rest of your day. We'll connect with you soon. See you. Have a good morning. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.